Good evening, Titans, and welcome back to school. And this is Mr. Simpson uh, with Algebra 1, and uh, we're going to get after it tonight, talking about Lesson 1.1, Solving Simple Equations. First of all, the new book is going to start off with an essential question each time. So we want you to think about how can you use simple equations to solve real-life problems. And if you look at the objectives for Lesson 1.1, Solving Simple Equations. We're going to solve linear equations using addition and subtraction. We're going to solve linear equations using multiplication and division. And we'll use linear equations to solve real-life problems. First of all, if you look in your student journal, you're going to notice that the core concept of the addition property is right there as well. And so you're not going to need to write this down, but we are probably going to have you write down uh, the example of how this is used to solve one step easy. So first of all, if we look at this, we're going to solve x minus 3 equals a negative 5 using the addition property. And the addition property states that if you add the same number to each side of an equation, you produce an equivalent equation. Equivalent means an equation that would have the same answer. So to get x by itself, since we're subtracting 3 from x, we're going to undo that by adding 3 to both sides. So now this goes away and we have x equals, because that's the only thing left on the left side, and negative 5 plus 3, so we have different signs, so different signs we subtract them, 5 minus 3 is 2, and we take the sign of the larger number to get x equals a negative 2. Now, here's an example for the subtraction property. Since y, we have plus 2.8, and we want to get y by itself, we're going to undo that by subtracting 2.8 from each side. Now, if you recall, subtraction is really the same as just adding the opposite. So I'm actually adding 0 0.9 and a negative 2.8. And since the signs are different, I'm going to subtract 2.8 minus 0 0.9. Remember to line up your decimal. I'm going to have to borrow here. So 18 minus 9 is 9. 1 minus 0 is 1. And since the 2.8 has the negative, my answer is going to be a negative 1.9. So now my answer is y equals a negative 1.9. And I would have put both those examples underneath your notes in your student journal. Now I'd like you to try. Go ahead and give these a shot and uh, just follow the both properties. Again, one-step equations. Remember, if you have the variable and you're adding something to it, then you're going to use the subtraction property to isolate the variable. And you've got the variable and you're subtracting a quantity from it, then you're going to add to get the variable isolated. The next core concept is the multiplication and division properties for solving equations. And again, just like we did before, we'll go ahead and, as the notes, write an example of each. So this first one, we have the opposite of n over 5 equals a negative 3. Well, we want to get the n by itself. So since n is being divided by 5, then we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 5. But because it also has that negative, we're going to just go ahead and multiply both sides by a negative 5. Multiply both sides by a negative 5. And now, the two negatives on this side cancel out to be a positive, And the 5 divides with the 5, and we're going to get n equals 15. And there's my final answer. If you look at example B for the division property, we want to solve for x. Well, x being multiplied by pi. So now we're going to divide both sides by pi. And we do that. Those divide out. We get x is equal to a negative 2. Again, just another example using a number instead of the symbol pi. And again, z is being multiplied by 1.3, so to undo that, we're going to divide both sides by 1.3. We divide those out, and we get z is equal to, and 5.2 divided by 1.3 is the same thing as 52 divided by 13, which is z is equal to 4. 
Again, make sure those examples are in the notes section of your student journal. Again, I'd like you to attempt to try some of these on your own uh, and see how you do. Now we're going to look at um, the core concept of solving real life problems. So, you know, we understand the problem. What is the unknown? What information is being given? What is being asked? And so on. Now, that's the top part of this slide is what's in your journal. The bottom part down here is something that another teacher and I created years ago, and we like to use it. Uh, it's rrr.tips.core and it's just an acronym that we use to recall that read, 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 think and identify. And so we have to read the problem as many times as we need to to think about it and identify what we need to know in order to understand the problem. Then we're going to make the plan. Then we're going to solve it. And then probably the most important part is to check over the reasonableness of the answer. And if we can do those things, then you're usually going to be pretty successful with any type of problem that you encounter. So here's the first problem. It says in the 2012 Olympics, Hussein Bolt won the 200 meter dash with a time of 19.32 seconds. Write and solve an equation to find his average speed to the nearest hundredth of a meter per second. So we're going to use the formula distance equals rate times time. Well, the distance is given to us is 200 meters. The rate, we don't know, but the time, we know, is 19.32 seconds. So if you look at this, it's a one-step equation where we're having to solve this by using the division property. Since the variable r is being multiplied by 19.32, we're going to divide both sides by 19.32. And if we do this, we're going to get our answer. When we divide this out, we'll get approximately 10.35, and that would be 10.35 meters per second. And so we always want to make sure we label it, so 10.35 meters per second second. And we think, well, does that make sense? Well, if he's running 200 meters at 10.35 meters per second, it seems like it would take him about 20 seconds to do that. Core concept, common problem solving strategies. So we have lots of different ways that we can try to solve a problem, and these are just some suggestions to help us uh, in developing our plan in the rrr.tips.core. The plan is to use a verbal model, draw a diagram, you know, guess and check, make an equation, whatever we need to do in order to solve that particular problem. So here we have on January 22nd, 1943, the temperature in Spearfish, South Dakota fell from 54 degrees at 9 a.m. to a negative 4 degrees at 9.27 a.m. How many degrees did the temperature fall? Well, it really would help if we kind of thought about it this on a thermometer. So if we have a thermometer here, and we put zero here, and we go 54 degrees here, well, a negative would be down here, negative 4 degrees. And so if we want to know how far it dropped from here to here, well, we have to go 54 degrees just to get to zero, and then another 4 degrees to get to a negative 4, so I would say that the temperature fell a total of 58 degrees. Now, if you notice, I didn't use an equation at all. I just used a diagram to show this. Now, we could use an equation if that's what we wanted to do, but we don't need to. But if we did, we'd have 54 degrees where we started. It dropped a temperature to a negative 4 degrees. And then we go ahead and solve this. Well, here... We want to solve for t, so we're going to get rid of the 54 first by subtracting 54, because again, the 54 is positive, so we want to subtract it. We'd have a negative t is equal to a negative 58, and now we divide by the negative 1, 
and we get T to be 58 degrees. And if you notice, the equation is probably even more confusing than just drawing the diagram. And again, we're just wanting you to solve the problem. So any of those methods that we come up with can be used to help solve a problem. So what I want you to think about and be able to do is describe in your words how to solve a one-step equation. So think about different types of one-step equations, either using addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and describe in your words how you would solve a one-step equation. And if you want, go ahead and do this last problem as something in your notes to decide if you feel confident of how to solve a one-step equation. All right, thank you very much, Titans. Make sure you bring your student journals to class tomorrow, and we'll talk about those tomorrow. Good evening.